The school budget today in the elementary and secondary levels of education is it's funding your doctor in 15 years. It's funding who might come up with the next car you drive. It's funding your own future. What is the future of Colchester schools? We know that Colchester historically struggles to pass school budgets on town meeting day. But did you also know that Colchester students' academic performance is among the best in the state, even with the district's comparatively low per pupil spending? That we have state and nationally recognized principals? That Colchester High School's graduation rate is well above the state average? That it has repeatedly ranked among the nation's top high schools? And that it has been regaled as a model for other high schools around the state? Let's step inside your schools for a moment to learn a bit more about them. I was sitting in the hall, and down the hall from me was the principal, Mr. Antonucci, and he had his arm around a little kid, and they were reading together, and I don't think I've seen a more impressive scene in a long time in an elementary school. The first thing I think of when I think of Union Memorial School is community. We have a very special sense of community. One that nurtures the town's kindergarten through the second grade students. There are an amazing number of parent volunteers who help support our mission of educating approximately 240 students. We have a wonderfully diverse learning opportunities for the children. We utilize technology, have adopted the Common Core curriculum, and have even been featured in a nationally produced professional development video showcasing quality instruction. Union Memorial School is a wonderful place to learn. The schools are probably the most important function of local government. I think we really should invest in the schools because anything that we invest in children's education is going to come back to us many times over in the future. The alternatives of not educating our children are going to be far worse. Hi from Polaris Point School. This year we worked on our master schedule and we redesigned it to incorporate two very important needs. One, the need for children to have breakfast first thing in the morning and the second one is an intervention block. The federal government has been cutting resources and our math support has been cut. And as a school, we felt that we still needed to provide our students with some intervention. So each classroom has a specific time for their intervention in either math or literacy. We also have continued our PBIS initiative. With that, we are building a community of learners and promoting positive behavior. Also, we have our whole school come together on Friday mornings, and each classroom presents to the whole school. We are using very exciting technology to do that. Our children develop a presentation on iPads, and using an Apple TV in our cafeteria, present to the whole school. Every classroom has that capability, and the children are very, very excited about it. And when you see young children using this level of technology, it's very rewarding. And as they grow, they're growing with the latest technology. Thank you. Education plays a bigger part than people sometimes think. And for a town to be able to say, you know, we're one of the best in the area, that's a huge accomplishment and that's a huge part of where they decide to live. Balance Bay School is in a unique position to help realize our district's vision and mission of helping our community feel a sense of belonging and welcome. Our youngest citizens start here in our exciting preschool and playgroup opportunities and then they return as third graders. And when they're here in third, fourth, and fifth grade, they can be the big kids and help out in the preschool or the fifth graders can help out in the third grade classrooms. We're also close to the high school and middle school, so we welcome our community's youth who often mentor and do volunteer work here at Mallets Bay. You should visit on a Saturday or a Sunday or a weekend night. Our school is busy seven days a week. It is used by so many community groups from the Colchester Recreation Department to the Scouts to a local church for religion classes. We're happy to open our building to anyone who would like to visit. We love the spirit of Malice Bay School and we hope you'll stop by. Knowing how to do things is extremely important, especially in today's economy and in today's world. Things are so specific. Jobs are coming out that we didn't have 10 years ago. 
we had no idea that these jobs would even exist. Colchester Middle School has become well known for its consistent and steady use of communication, whether that's our Cloud K-12, our Twitter feed, our school's website, our weekly newsletter that we're putting out. We build meaningful community partnerships now here at Colchester Middle School and it truly is a place of student voice and choice, which is something very important in the middle years. Over the next two years, we're deepening our application of data-driven decision-making research-based instructional strategies, the gains that we've made in reading and math gauged on the kneecaps, and our efforts towards meeting AYP and closing those achievement gaps will allow our teachers to make decisions for students not only at that classroom level about how to shift instruction, but at the student level. As always, we're looking for parent involvement in our school, so please consider joining our PTO. You can find information about how to do just that on our school website. I think to be successful as a nation and successful as a community, you really need to have education as a focus. At Colchester High School, we strive to create multiple opportunities for our students to engage in academics and self-discovery in order to prepare for their post high school years. Our goal is to produce life, college, work ready students by providing them with access to rigorous and relevant curriculum in a school where we are known for building strong relationships with each and every one of our students. At CHS, students experience rigorous academic study, increased course offerings, access to online courses through virtual high school, as well as the opportunity to enroll in college classes through our dual enrollment program. We are encouraging our upperclassmen to engage in job shadows or internships to better expand each student's understanding of what they want to pursue post high school. I am very pleased to announce that Colchester High School has received $30,000 in grants this year to help us with this work. At Colchester High School, students engage in academic excellence in a climate of respect, responsibility, and pride. There is no doubt about it. Education everywhere in Vermont is expensive, and a complex set of state-mandated variables make education funding difficult to understand. Here are the nuts and bolts. The proposed CSD budget will increase taxes by 8.586%. This is largely because the Vermont Base Homestead Tax Rate, which is determined by the legislature, is expected to rise significantly this year, dramatically impacting school budgets all over the state. In fact, there will be double-digit increases for schools all over Chittenden County. Here in Colchester, a 0% budget change, which would have required significant cuts in the current baseline budget, still would have resulted in a nearly 4% educational tax increase as a result of the Vermont-based homestead tax rate increase. As was recently reported by the Burlington Free Press, Colchester's proposed educational tax increase is among the lowest in Chittenden County. Here is a breakdown of the anticipated FY 2015 expenditures, which includes one-to-one -one devices for students in grades 7 through 9. Colchester School District plans to purchase Chromebooks for students in grades 7 and 8, and laptops for students in grade 9, considerably increasing technology integration in our curriculum. When we examine our per-pupil spending, which is among the lowest in Chittenden County and around the state, we see that we compare very favorably. And did you know that, though enrollments are declining across Vermont, Colchester's kindergarten enrollments have been steadily increasing? Let's talk for a moment about the impact of income sensitivity on tax bills. Did you know that if a taxpayer's total household income is less than $90,000, the school tax contributions are based upon income rather than property value? For example, the educational tax increase for the owner of a home valued at $250,000 would normally be $293. But if that owner's total household income is $65,000, the tax increase will actually be $15.64, about 30 cents per week. Nearly 6 out of 10 Colchester taxpayers will benefit from this income sensitivity mechanism. We urge Colchester residents with a total household income of less than $90,000 to view the income sensitivity graph for more detailed information about the impact of the income sensitivity mechanism upon their educational tax bills. Many of you will be very pleasantly surprised. This and a great deal of other comprehensive budget-related information is available on csdvt.org.
You may also visit the Spotlight at csdspotlight.org and read our articles in our budget category. How are we going to fund the future? The future. The future. The future. The future. The future.